going? Got salt port for the feast. Your feast is over. Doesn't sound like it's over. <laughs> if I tell you it's over, it's over. Turn this cart around and get the hell out of here. You've got pig's feet too. Are you soft in the head? Turn this cart around. Your grace. I feel I've been remiss in my duties. I've given you meats and wine and music, but I haven't shown you the hospitality you deserve. My king has married and I owe my new queen a wedding gift. Because he didn't keep his vow? <laughs> the king in the north arises. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Head off. Lord Wally, enough! Let it end! Please! He is my son! My first son! Let him go, and I swear we will forget this! I swear it by the all gods and you! We will take no vengeance! You already swore me one oath right here in my castle. You swore by all the gods your son would marry my daughter! Take me for a hostage! But let Rob go, Rob. Get up. Get up and walk out. Please. 
he won't. Please! He can't. And why would I let him do that? On my honor as a Tullik, on my honor as a Stark, let him go, or I will cut your wife's throat. He doesn't care. He doesn't care in the least bit. I'll find another. <laughs> Mother. The Lannisters send their regards. and put her out of her misery. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? This show. Oh my god. <gasps> well. One does not so easily recover from that. That, apparently, is the Red Wedding episode. A legendary episode, and with good reason. And no, didn't see that coming in the least bit. Uh, I knew offhand that 3-9 was a Red Wedding, and yet with the lead up to it, and all of the talk about the royal wedding, I sort of assumed it was Joffrey and uh, and something that would happen at, at his wedding. And then the show sort of bait and switched with a few other potential weddings that Sansa and, and Tyrion and Cersei and Loras, you know, you hear Red Wedding and it was, at the time when it happened, it was impossible to ignore the idea that there was a, the idea, there was a concept of a, of an episode called The Red Wedding, and I never, I had no idea where it was going. And it was, you know, so this episode begins with Rob's head finally back in, in the battle, uh, distracted by his his love for um, Taliza, and and by the end of the episode, they're gone. Rob's gone, Taliza's gone, his baby, Lady Stark, can now be with Ned again. And the game just changed. And it's not even just that the game changed. So you wonder, you you sit back and you say, well, why does why does Walder Frey do this? Is he really that upset that Rob Stark broke his promise? And yes, uh, it seems that he was because he uh, admonishes Lady Cat for saying essentially, like, you made me a promise and your son didn't keep it. But the message is that the Lannisters send their regards, which show that the Lannisters are uh, consistently multiple steps ahead of all of their adversaries. And I'm sure that that's Tywin negotiating with Walder Frey before the wedding even took place. And, and this show shows that there's uh, going to be vengeance or vendetta. And and, and the, the brutality of this episode is not even in the killing because killing happens in this show quite as easily as people sit down for breakfast or lunch. But it's the fact that Arya after all that she's been through, arrives just in time to see the the outskirts of the slaughter and to know that this is likely uh, the fate of her family. Does she make that connection? And the Hound swoops in and rescues her yet again, forcing me to question what his loyalty is to uh But you know, the clues, the clues are there. Like the way that it's written, the way that, that uh, Taliza and Rob speak of their child and, and what will we name him and don't you want to teach him to ride horses? You can, I, I should have seen that was coming and then of course I didn't. So, um, so let's, let's, <laughs> wow, that is a devastating episode. Let's get away from uh, Rob Stark. We'll come back to Rob Stark uh, and talk about Bran and his power. So Bran turns out to be a very powerful warg. Uh, he can go into animals. He takes over one of the dire wolves, is able to see Jon Snow. Uh, he takes over Hodor. So um, Hodor is becoming a pretty fascinating character. Uh, you know, an oaf who's loyal and is uh, used as a horse. For the most part. Why does he keep saying his name over and over again? 
That's, you know, he does it so much now that it's becoming something that we have to sort of discuss. Uh, I don't understand why he's doing it. And then after Bran uh, assumed him, assumed, what is he doing? Taking him over? Uh, he essentially got knocked out. So I, I guess we'll begin to explore Bran's power and just how powerful he really is. He's so close to John, like John was right there, right? And John, so John finally shows his allegiance uh, and his allegiance is to the people of the North, not the wildlings. He turns on the wildlings. He's unable to kill somebody. John, again, put in a position to prove yourself by killing somebody is unable to. And, you know, John's only gonna be able to do that for so long. It's eventually going to get him into a point where he will have painted himself into a corner that he's not going to be able to escape from. I don't know where he rode off to, hopped on a horse, uh, left his true love, uh, and stormed away. Egret now realizing that John uh, did turn his back on her and the wildlings, but her specifically, and then she turned her back on the wildlings for John, and then John left her, and that was that was slightly devastating. And then Sam and Gilly get to the wall, so that's good to know. But really, this one, I don't, I don't think we went to King's Landing even once. It's one, probably one of the only episodes where we did not see anything happening in King's Landing. And Danny, so, so two people, Danny uh, vanquishes uh, the Yunkai with the help of White Snake and her loyal council. Doesn't even have to use her dragons in order to do it. So she's amassing more of an army. So she gets rid of a, a threat, and Tywin Lannister gets rid of a threat in that he eliminates Rob Stark from the game. The game is savage, and um, you either win it or you die. And Rob Stark did not win it this time. So, holy hell. Holy hell. That was, uh, that is season three, episode nine. We have one more to go before season three comes to a close. What on earth could potentially come after that? We'll find out together. Uh, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and we'll continue to react to Game of Thrones as we work our way through all of the episodes.